guys and welcome back to another unfiltered gamer card game review and today's card game up on the tabletop is called riot at the round table it plays two to six players takes about 45 to 60 minutes to play and is for ages eight and up and this game is a trick-taking game basically a modern mechanic uh based on the game hearts in one of those classic games you've probably played before the deck of cards or one of the newer more modern twists like uh, tournament at camelot gorus maximus and other games similar like ooh, fox in the forest the two-player one but in this one here you're going to be getting six cards in your hand, and your objective is to become the new leader of, of Camelot, basically, trying to rule over your patrons, and you're going to be doing that by placing down a set of cards to attack another player. Maybe you'll play three fives, in which case they, that player will become the defender, and he or she is going to be basically either choosing to pass and take those cards into their hand, uh, or, sorry, yeah, forfeit taking those cards in their hand, pass by playing a card of the same type and pushing it to another player, or or defending and when defending happens it's interesting if you have to defend against two fives and you play two cards that are better than those other players can jump in and try and play more cards against you to try and basically fault you and not let you get a benefit because if you defend successfully you're going to be getting cards so those can be things like cannon cards which will allow you to do special abilities or trade them in for clovers clovers are also very powerful cards that can be traded in for scepters which are basically like victory points and you can trade in two of these guys for crowns and getting three crowns is how you win the game when the deck ends you're going to be getting a crown if you are the winning player additionally scepters for everybody else who is in second all the way up to last place which last place is just going to get a clover card three crowns to win the game ends by dumping your hand after the deck has been depleted anyway let's take a look at the down below the contents of the game right at the round table I'll show you how to play give you an idea of what you get and then we'll come up and discuss what i think so here we have the game riot at the round table and everything in Included. And as you can see, we've set it up for two players and we have all the components distributed. This is the rule book for the game. These are all the tokens that you're going to be using, whether they be the cannon arsenal cards, the lucky clovers, scepters, and then crowns, your main achievement, your victory tokens that you need. And if you can get three of these babies, you win the game. And they have a front and back, which are just scepters and crowns, because you'll be using this interchangeably. There's also going to be player reference cards that talk about the face cards and their values from Squire up to Jester. And on the other side, this is your arsenal abilities, and they tell you how they function. Every player is going to get six cards from this shuffled deck here. And in each uh, in this deck, there's going to be four different suits. You'll have like fires, emeralds, you're going to have whatever this yellow suit is, which are also represented on this die here. And you're also going to, of course, find the face cards in here and, and the uh, special jester. He's very powerful. He's basically like a wild. Uh, there is the die, which is going to be used uh, as the attacker to try and see what the trump suit is. Like most of the different trick-taking games, you'll determine a trump suit as well as the suit that you're playing, which may coincide or not. And then this is the defender's chip. This is going to determine who's going to be blocking the attacks from a player. And after that, you've set it up. Every player has got their two cannons, their six cards, and you've chosen an attacker and a defender. You can set everything else kind of a little bit to the side, make sure everybody has one of these guys here, and begin to play the game. And I'm going to just move this away. Now, in the game, you're basically going to first choose to attack somebody. And the way you attack somebody is you'll play cards from your hand, uh, and you're trying to play the same number uh, of of, of numbers or face face cards so for instance right now i've got two eights and as an attacker i can choose to go ahead and attack this player over here with two eights it doesn't matter the color just as long as the number or the face is the same and jesters can actually be used interchangeably as well so those can be played like that as well if you want or you can save it you're also going to make sure this die is rolled, and when you roll the die, based on what you roll, whether it be the Jester, which in the non-deluxe case is going to be basically just, there is no trump suit, or one of these four, which makes these colors trump suit, or then there's this one here, which I don't know what it does. Actually, I think it might be wild, or dealer's choice, but if I went ahead and set this like that, I rolled this, that means blue is the trump suit. So anyway, he's gone ahead and played these, and I have three options as the defender. The defender can choose to simply pass, and if the defender passes, the defender can play a card of the same number and pass it on to the next player, and that player will have to defend against the eights, along with the extra eight that was played as the defender, but the defender doesn't have an eight. Another thing that the defender can do is forfeit. If the defender chooses to forfeit, the defender can not beat or wants to keep the attack cards, then they can pick up all the attack cards and add them to their hand, just like that. The defender also forfeits their turn as the next initial attacker. So in a two-player game, basically this player would just simply get to attack again. 
the third option, which is the best possible option for the defender if they can do it, is to defend. And in order to defend, you're going to need to beat the cards. You'll, and you'll either beat them with the trump suit, which is going to be blue, or with a higher value of the same suit. So in this case here, we have an eight that is red, so I can play this red 10 to beat that. And we have an eight that is blue, so I can play this guard on that eight, which would also beat that card there. If no one chose to play anything else, these would all go and be discarded, and this player would win, and as the defender, they would get a cannon card. Additionally, during that phase in attacking, other players can actually drop additional cards out to fight against the defender. And if the defender is not able to defend against those cards, then the defender will lose, and the defender will have to pick up cards. So there is a total of, I believe, six cards that can come out against the defender or equal to the number of cards in the defender's hand. But after that, that's it. So there's like a little scramble when it comes to a game of three or more players. Regardless, though, after that happens, the round is going to end. Players will draw back up to cards and these will switch. A new, a new die can be rolled as well as these cards can be played. And generally when this die is rolled is when the uh, round ends or when these cards are played. There's certain cards that do certain things. For instance, you can skip somebody's attack. You can shield against arsenal cards, give a player a dead pile, or clear all cards played against you. Uh, also, remember remember to do the trading system, and at the end of rounds or whatnot, you can trade cards in. So at any point in time, you can trade two cannons for a single clover, you can trade two clovers for a scepter, and two scepters for a crown. Because at the end of the round, the round's going to end when this deck runs out, and whoever runs out first is going to get a free crown. Everyone else is going to get a scepter, and the last player with the most cards in hand is going to get a clover. If you can get three crowns in hand, you will win the game of Riot at the round table. And that's basically how the game is played. So let's come up and discuss it. All right, so I got a caveat. I didn't get them all right. I, I knew it when I was saying it, but when you roll die, basically it's gonna start at the beginning of the game and it's also gonna occur whenever somebody draws one of these cards here. When these cards get drawn, you, that player is gonna roll a die and it will change the trump suit and then you're going to draw a new card so that's how the die changes additionally though i was right at the end of a round you re-roll again because it basically starts a new round and then of course whenever you play a card that will tell you to re-roll the die or to place the die uh, in the color orientation that you want, which is also a nice way to do it. But otherwise, that's basically the idea of the game. You're gonna go through rounds up until the point when the deck ends, and when the deck ends, then you're going to try and dump all your cards, and whoever does that first is gonna get a crown. And that's one way to win the game. But of course, playing throughout the game lets you do turn-ins. Speaking of turn-ins, in this rule book here, it discusses turn-ins a little bit at the beginning and tells you some of the things that turn in for some things, and then it does it at the end a little bit, and there's also one spot in the cannon area, or the clover area, that tells you that this needs to all be put in one specific area, so it'll make it a lot easier for us to know. So I had to go through the rule book quite a few times to figure that out. Also, the crown on the die, it does, I don't know what it's going to be necessarily. We've been playing as though it's just a wild, or as though it's a choose your own trump suit when you roll that die however we could be wrong the jester one is no trump suit but in the deluxe edition there's going to be basically another deck of cards that look like this that have a joker symbol on it or a jester symbol on it and that will be the trump suit or there'll be something interesting that happens and i'm actually curious to see what they're going to do with that uh, in the game it's very interesting because you're going to basically be attacking and you're gonna be attacking with very specific types of cards the same number and you're gonna try and put as many as you possibly can out because you want to empty your hand just like any normal trick taking style game and other players um, are going to defend by either trying to pass cards away and get rid of cards in their hand or they're going to try and defend against those cards to get cannon cards. But when that happens, other people don't want them to get those cannon cards because those trade in for victory points if you can save the, enough of them. So they'll play their cards as well. And in normal trick-taking games, you're gonna empty your hand and that person will win the round. But in this one, you have to go through the deck which works better in a larger player game, in a four or five player game, I would say, but in a two or three player game, it kind of just makes you run through. And at the end of the game, everybody's basically gonna have the same number of cards in their hand because you always draw up to six based on the rules. So what I'd actually like to see is just similar to other Star Trek King games where you have to empty your hand. If you empty your hand, that's the way the round would end, especially in a two player game. Also in a two player game, because when you're defending, other players have an opportunity to dump more cards in, but because there's only two players, that other players dumped all the cards and they already have. So there, that kind of aspect of the game is removed when it's actually a really cool aspect that can, that's added in those larger player count games, which makes this game have a nice sweet spot of that four or five player range. 
all the artwork is uh, rather nice. I enjoy it. I think there's some kind of interesting cartoony aspects. I would actually just like to see more of just all of the symbols as opposed to using the different faces. Make the faces have some type of symbol as well like you'd see on a normal deck of playing cards. It's really easy to tell the difference between the numbers and colors and shapes and whatnot and being able to roll the die is a nice twist as well with the two different sides that change it up as well as the fact that the Joker I think is going to add some interesting and intriguing gameplay for you trick-taking fans out there. This is not one of my favorite trick-taking games but I also don't dislike it either. I enjoy this game because it's kind of this family friendly pushing through moving around selecting and choosing playing with more players obviously where I'm going to be at more for this game because I like the more craziness that the game kind of brings at you when you start playing the arsenal cards and the little little clover cards here which is also kind of interesting as well because some of these guys are really powerful if you take a look into the rules for the clover cards i think i put there in here somewhere yes uh force another player to pick up the entire dead pile and add it to their hand that is extremely damaging that's an entire discard set that you're probably not going to be able to come back from maybe even too powerful a swap hands with another player preferably one with fewer cards and then clear all attack cards played against plus the cards that they want to play as defense cards even if they cannot beat uh, beat all the attack cards and no cannon card is awarded though so that's good uh, and of course the cannon cards let you do stuff like wizard moving the die around and guardian angel protecting you in certain ways so there's all this kind of like little aspects of either take that or prevention and cards that prevent those cards from being played as well at the heart of a trick-taking game. So if you like games that are kind of like Uno mixed in with a little bit of Sorry mixed in with a trick-taking game that has to do with classical hearts and you want it with a family theme then definitely check out Riot at the Round Table. I'm going to be checking out the Kickstarter and watching it to see what they do with the different deluxe add-ons and changes they make and definitely suggest if, especially if you have four or five players and you want something that's going to be family oriented to trick-taking game this one is definitely one to take a look at Riot at the Round table go ahead and look in the description down below and let me know what you guys think about the game whether you'd want to pick it up all right outro all right guys thanks for watching another unfiltered gamer board game review card game review if you like this video check out our videos here on youtube like subscribe and comment notification bell subscribe button if you're watching this video you're not subscribing you're breaking my heart push the button Okay, enough berating you. Go ahead and check out our live stream every, every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. PST. We play games just like this one down below. And with our community of gamers, you can join us on Patreon that will assist you in knowing what's coming up next on our streams as well as other bonus Patreon live streams. And you'll be able to start choosing categories for what Kelly talks about in the next Kelly's Corner videos, which have been quite the success. They're doing very well because she's very knowledgeable in board game topics. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to having a riot with you at the round table next time.